everybody, and welcome to our video about the primary care program at the, the Penn Center for Primary Care. My name is Rodney Nandiwada, and I am the interim program director. I'm also our uh, track director of the medical education and leadership track. I've been a part of the Penn family for the past five years. This is my sixth year. The primary care program has been my home. I've been intimately involved in our curriculum development, the creation of our Suboxone Clinic, mentorship of our residents, and our former primary care program director has been mentoring me with our program leadership um, to step into this role. And I'm so excited to be here with all of you on your journey to become primary care physicians. Um, just so you know a little bit about our program, in your first year, you're actually fully integrated into the categorical program. Our second year is where we kind of own you and bring you home into the Penn Center for Primary Care, although even our interns will tell you within two weeks, they already start referring to PCPC as home. Um, and within your second year, you then go to a four plus four block schedule where you have four weeks inpatient and four weeks in the outpatient setting with us. So we have you here at home for a good period of time. We have lots of second clinic sites that are embedded in the community to help to foster your specific interests within primary care. We also try to expose you to a lot of our subspecialties so that you can experience, you know, how our colleagues work within their realms and think about how can you bring that into your own primary care practice. Um, and then we have people go off onto all kinds of career paths and have a lot of ability for close mentorship and personalization of your careers. What our biggest asset though is, is our faculty who have been here for such a long time, as well as our residents who are basically a, our culture and who create the love within our community. And so I'm gonna pass it to our Associate Program Director, Robin Canada, and to one of our current chief residents and one of our primary care graduates, Nicolina. And so my first question to you guys is, can you tell me a little bit about what's your favorite aspect of our primary care program? Robin, I'll, I'll throw it to you oh. first. <laughs> well, I would say definitely, well, this is a tough one. I was about to say definitely the residents, but I also, um, the other attendings are my primary care family. Um, so it really, it sounds a little cheesy, but um, when I was looking for a job after the Indian Health Service, I basically, the only place I interviewed um, in all of Pennsylvania was this program, where I had been a primary care resident myself, and I, I just loved it so much. Um, and I got to come back and work with my colleagues and work with amazing residents who are the other amazing part of the program. I feel like we get the cream of the crop in the primary care track. Um, Nicolina is, is definitely up there, um, high up. <laughs> and uh, so I'll pass it over to you, Nicolina. Thanks, Rob. Uh, mine's easy too, and it does sound cheesy, but it's really the people. I tell people all the time, it, it's not what you do, it's who you do it with and who you work with. And I switched into the primary care program, so I already had this idea that, oh, I wouldn't fit in because I didn't start intern year with them. And I've been pleasantly, pleasantly proven otherwise. So that's my honest answer, but I, I almost stole Robin's. The other thing I've really appreciated is the opportunity for exposure. I feel like this training that I got makes me good, a, good at a little bit of everything, and the attendings are very conscious about, hey, if you couldn't reach an endocrinologist, what would you do? Or what resource would you use to make this happen? And I like that I don't have to, you know, do 10 fellowships to have some basic comfort with a lot of basic problems that our community sees. So the people and the opportunities for me, 100. Great. Nicolina, tell us a little more about how being a primary care resident has kind of shaped who you are as a physician in your career. That's easy. I just, I, it, it's made me, my humanity shines through my work. I get to be myself. And I think, some of you guys know, I ask my patients, what are you grateful for? I can't think of that many careers, residencies, fellowships that just lets you get to know your patient and have an impact in their life. I think the mentorship I get, and no one, I'm jumping around, but no, no one's ever said, hey, we find it strange that you have these weird questions for your patients. You know, I, I feel fostered, I feel supported, and I think that's sort of how PCPC works or is ingrained in us. And I feel like I know it's this way because I'm like that with the interns. Like, they're my babies, you know? So, <laughs> they're like, oh. Can I tell you, Nicolina, I actually now ask all my patients as part of the social history what brings them joy, and that's from you. Oh, yeah. thank you. 
<laughs> I just wanted you to know that. Oh I my gosh, that, that is crazy. Happy. And this is an example of teaching up. Oh my God, I love it, I love it, I love it. Oh my God. And, and you know, we should also disclose that Nicolina is one of the chief residents of our entire program. <laughs> and she's asking people if they're grateful. And so she's teaching up to, I mean, she's teaching to an entire residency program about compassion and patient-centered care, so. So as part of <laughs> our humanity, a lot of what brings us so much joy in primary care is caring for our community. And so uh, Dr. Canada runs and has developed so many of our innovative community engagement uh, curricula, as well as advocacy, narrative, you know, narrative medicine kind of work. And so uh, Robin, could you tell us a little bit about some of our community medicine and advocacy curriculum? Sure, um, I am gonna try to be super short. Um, I will say that when I was um, a resident 18 years ago, we always, Penn, but Penn traditionally, the primary care program always had a second clinic, which at the time was very unusual. And that's one of the reasons I chose Penn. I'm happy to say that since then, um, all of our clinic sites have really um, migrated into pretty much underserved medicine. Um, our main sites are the district health centers, which are um, their safety net clinics, yeah, in Philadelphia, really, and the two we um, place our residents in are based in West Philly. So, you know, 10 years ago, we had no idea where we were discharging our patients who were high risk, um, maybe uninsured, uninsurable, and now our residents are acutely aware because they are working in the safety net clinic where our high risk patients are being discharged. Um, so we have the city health centers, which Nicolina can talk more about. Um, we have a clinic for undocumented Latinos, Puentes de Salud. Um, I have about two residents a year with working with me there. And that's been a long-term relationship starting with um, working with um, mushroom workers out in Kennett Square. And as the population in South Philly has um, pretty much exploded um, with undocumented, mostly Mexican patients, we now have a clinic right in Center City. Um, and so that's another continuity site. And our, and our last main site is HIV primary care with very vulnerable populations. Um, so that kind of all started, um, you know, the community relationship with the district health center started with our residents, started about um, seven years ago. And with that came a curriculum. We, uh, we are very nimble. Uh, we're a smaller program. So we sort of change based on, we keep some core things, you know, health disparities in Philly, um, sort of um, health literacy, things like that are, are always around. But um, new things this year have been, we've, we've explored a little bit more into um, how to uh, successfully take care of hospitalized patients with opioid use disorder. Um, since we run an outpatient Suboxone clinic, there was interest in that. Also trans health um, is something that we're talking more about and learning more from experts. Um, We've, uh, as far as advocacy, we've called our representatives about um, basically gun control legislation since we are in a gun violence epidemic in Philly and I'm sure all over the country. Um, we do work, we've just had somebody talk from the, we have a, a great relationship with the Department of Public Health. Um, our, our regular lecturer and bestie is now the interim health commissioner, so she's a little busy. So our latest um, talk was from a, a woman who's dealing with maternal child health um, and really like trying to reduce um, mortality and disparities there. And so we, we sort of are in touch with what's happening in the city as far as health initiatives. We've done op-ed writing, we've done narrative medicine. Um, we have folks coming in from our giant, amazing division of general medicine talking about health disparities research and how to uh, do community academic partnerships and community-based participatory research as well. So there's a lot going on, um, always changing, but that's sort of like what the flavor is now. And then Nicolina, <laughs> Nicolina, Robin brought up the district health center. Can you tell us about your experience working in the district health center? Yes, oh my gosh, still one of my best experiences of residency, I think, I'll frame it this way, Penn is very fortunate. Our resources are plentiful. What I loved about the health center was these resources are available for uninsured patients, but you also learn to manage without them because it's not just, oh, we have this fancy building in West Philly that you can go to for your care. If your patient says, I can't get there, what are you gonna do for me here in this health center with this pharmacy? And I think it, it taught me, one, to be more conscious of the fact that 
we may have resources, but our patients face way more barriers than just showing up to the door. And I've become very creative in sort of helping my patients meet their milestones, all from the health center. And I think the other experience I got from it was being a better inpatient doctor too, even on service, because it's like, okay, so where are they gonna go for discharge? Why should we send them on Coumadin versus Eliquis? Can they really afford this? What's in their zip code? What's their zip code to a health center? Knowing that those resources are there and my colleagues are there taking care of these wonderful, wonderful patients that just don't have the same opportunities some of us may have. So I, I really, I joke that I think I could live in the middle of nowhere because of my experience at the health center. Like, ser seriously. So, I mean, as you can see, and I hope what this video has given you is a, a glimpse into our culture, our community. Our goal is really that our program is about you and we are here to support you and grow with you in whatever way that you can. We train a ton of doctors to be primary care doctors, but we also support all of our primary care adjacent <laughs> um, fields where they need a lot of primary care and outpatient work as a skill set. Um, and so our goal is really to make you the best you that you can come out of our program being. So if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to chat more. Um, and we hope that we have filled your outpatient primary care hearts filled with lots of joy. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.